Yep, we're in the Southern Hemisphere. It's June 1998, and this is Mauritius. 1,865 square kilometers soaring up from the Indian Ocean, protected by a coral reef, surrounded by a lagoon and deep blue water. This is a true paradise. One Eye, the perfect wave, the legendary spot in Southern Mauritius, the venue of the second stage of the Windsurf Trilogy. After Cape Verde in February, 14 top windsurfers gather for a taste of adrenaline, a great trip on the other side of the world. For the first time in its young history, the trilogy has come to Mauritius. For three weeks, dedicated to aerials and surfing are one of the most powerful and dangerous waves in the world. One eye. No rider had dared to challenge this water wall in a competition until the trilogy. surfing out of this world and checking out the place and especially the seabed well that's the first thing to do as a kind of rehearsal Lindsay from the city of Le Morne will be our guide and protector during our stay saying here it's amazing these people they're almost walking on the waves beautiful to watch but uh, difficult to do hmm? Riders really are artists on the water. Since 1997, the format of the Windsurf Trilogy has been the same in different countries. It takes place at some wild spot, which hasn't seen much windsurfing on it before. Such a place is this southern coast of Mauritius. Big waves and very windy. Just the place to perform some breathtaking windsurfing. The trilogy is a championship. Each rider meets every other rider at least once, with a minimum of three rounds of 45 minutes each. The only thing the windsurfers have to do is to adapt themselves to the swell. of skill, balance, strength, and daring produces results like this in this huge wall of water. Well, there's no doubt the trilogy expresses the inner soul of windsurfing. It's a mixture of adventure and culture get the opportunity to surf good waves, to have a lot of fun, and discover somewhere new and a different kind of people, too. Wow. Now, the people here on the island of Mauritius is very special. People, I mean, the people, the, the local people here are nice. I mean, I've, I honestly never experienced 
uh, so many nice people around. I mean, they invite you for, 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 for barbecue. They want to go fishing with you. They, they want to do stuff with you, you know. They really, they really want to uh, connect. In Mauritius, there are 160 kilometers of coastline, a big local fishing industry, and tropical weather, cooled a tad by the southeast trade winds. As an ex-colony, with merchants who came from Arabia, Portugal, Holland, France, and England, and with a slave trading past, little by little, the island has become a mix of three continents, Africa, Europe, and Asia. Nowadays, three quarters of Mauritians are Indian, the official language is English, but mainly people speak French and Creole. The main resources of Mauritius, tourism and the sugarcane industry in the north. The south remains wild and untouched. The town of Le Mans, which hosts the trilogy, still has its own traditional fishing industry. You can find tuna, wahoo, sailfish, any kind of fish from the lagoon or the surrounding waters, in fact. The beauty of Mauritius lifts the spirits of the windsurfers. Stéphane Etienne saying it's amazingly beautiful. I think it's one of the most beautiful islands in the world. More than, than Hawaii, for example, mainly because of the beach. There are more lagoons, beautiful colors in the water, turquoise, gradations of blue. Yeah, I think it's more beautiful than Hawaii. And our guide Lindsay saying there's a hole in the cliff over there. And when you look at it from a certain angle, it looks like a human profile. On the face, you can see the eye, the nose, the forehead, the mouth. One eye. The channel over there is called One Eye. Pretty narrow. And that's where the trilogy is organizing its events. One eye in the cliff, one eye in the water. A powerful, swollen, almost diabolical wave. With good wind and a good swell, the trilogy organizers have decided to send their troops out to sea. Jerome Verhoff from Germany making his first appearance in the trilogy. Johann Kerhove of France. And 17-year-old Dani Brasch, the youngest competitor from Spain. Half French, half Spanish, it's Stéphane Etienne, the oldest of the competitors. Then there's England's Tristan Boxford. Another rider from Spain, Dario Awida. The Australian, Ricky van der Toren. From Guadeloupe, David Buru. And Scott McCurcher and Scott Carbill, together, chewing the fat. This wave's perfect, just everything. You know, the swell direction lines up perfectly. It's got trade winds that consistently blow the same direction. And then the way the reef bends, you know, the wave runs down the reef and just right in the perfect spot, there's a channel where the water rushes out, but it allows us a little safety at the end of our wave. Pierre Mignard is saying the waves are a little bit far out from the beach, so we as judges need a boat to get really close to the channel and to the reef. There we can really see what is happening and do our job. Three of us all together. Three judges hired to observe and note the riders in three main criteria. Technical performance, the tricks and, obviously, the style.
when the wave is running through the channel as brilliantly as this, they really do turn on the style. One eye providing perfect conditions on the southern coast of Mauritius. Fantastic aerials, beautiful surfing, flowing style. Put them all together, and naturally, you score heavy points. But this year, something different. A female judge making her first appearance. Comes from France. Her name is Nicole Borona. Yep, I belong to the judging team of the Mauritius Trilogy, she says. There's Pierre, the head judge, Alex, and me. I don't think there's been a female judge before hired for a World Cup or for the Trilogy. The Trilogy, of course, a pretty new event, so I'm the very first female judge here. I'm used to sailing. I've taken part in several World Cups. I'm still involved in surfing competitions. If I was playing ping pong or tennis, of course, it'd be different. But since I take part in races i see these people surfing all year long in different spots and i think i'm better thought of as a result by the riders and i know what i'm looking for so whatever the riders would do nicole borona would not be far away scrutinizing their every move is a powerful wave. On the south of the island, the swell breaks the reef close to the shore. It can't be surfed easily. One mistake, and you're back straight onto the beach. Four. That is the heaviest wave I've ever sailed. It's like you're going, you're bottom turning, and it's just like... A huge barrel just looking at you, and it's, you have to carry so much speed down the line. It's just the water just sucking, sucking, sucking. So, and uh, if you get caught on the inside, boy, you're done. Like I just lost everything, yeah. lost my rig, like, sail destroyed, mast, boom. It was all just a big, huge ball of crap. This is what happens when the ocean gets mad. Stephen Etienne bringing in the wreckage of his windsurfer. Bon ben, c'est chaud. Yeah. Etienne saying it's hot. On the spot, I think we have a perfect one eye today. 
What surprises me is there's no real pattern to the waves. You can get two big waves and then four, and then 20 minutes later, not a single wave at all. So the key thing is to choose your wave really carefully. Another very important point is rest for the windsurfers. After the session, the riders, well, they ease into local life. And relaxation is highly recommended here, as well as a little shopping. Got to spend those rupees, after all. And when the wind drops, they go back to the sea, but without a mast and just a board. Pretty nice. A few close-out sessions, but uh, smaller ones should hit the reef nicely. So, uh, light offshore breeze, nice sun, perfect day. Scott McKercher, without his sail, but still with his sense of balance, surfing the spume of the Indian Ocean. <laughs> We're on the island of Mauritius for the Windsurf Trilogy, the night carrying away the sessions of the day. The windsurfers are living day to day, unlike the race manager, who's thinking about the future. And Minya is saying we're here on the central plateau of Mauritius just now, a town called Fourborn, ready to visit an internet site which will provide us any information we need about a spot called Le Morne. We need this information because this spot is pretty tough because of its particular shape. So Minya looking at the internet for the weather forecast just now and locating a depression that will pass to the east and provide more big seas, but it won't arrive for another four or five days. Meanwhile, other things to do. What best encapsulates Mauritius is the conviviality of the people, and the Windsurf Trilogy is getting deep into the Mauritius spirit. Along with that rhythm of the waves, the riders are discovering another Mauritius with the Sega, music brought in by the slaves many, many years ago. All you need is a ravan, a big flat box, and coconuts filled with seeds. tropical night, the partying goes on till late. And the morning after, the sea is calm, maybe too calm. But the ethos of the Windsurf Trilogy is straightforward enough. In order to ride with a good wind and waves, well, you have to be patient. This is Tristan Boxford, the uh, Englishman talking in French here, saying he thinks conditions are not as consistent as in La Réunion nearby, but here it's good for everybody because you get lagoons for the beginners and the reef for those who want to surf the good waves. Before the session and the competition, a little lounging about in a beautiful playground, the lagoon.
while the riders of the trilogy are having a ball, Lamorne Mountain looks over Tamaran. Located in the southwest of the island, the little town of Tamaran is famous for its swell. In July and August, it's the place where top surfers come to ride the big waves. The other thing Tamaran is known for are the salt works at the entrance of the town. Local fellow saying in order to produce salt, we have a pump which pumps the water, then it goes into a tank, and from there it does the job, then it comes back here. Simple. The salt industry, the main business of Tamaran, an important ingredient in the island's economy. The people use it every day. To make the salt, you need water, yes, and then you have to warm it up. 23 degrees, 24, 25, 26. Keep on heating it, and when it reaches uh, 30 degrees Celsius, it's done. Ready. Salt. Fit for the table. Tamaran, like the rest of the southwest of the island, still wild. The area protected from the huge tourist attractions which are in the north. The salt works, like the tea plantations located in the southeast, are local enterprises which fit into these wild surroundings. In Tamaran, nature still has its rights. And it all fits in with the spirit of the Windsor Trilogy. So here the salt is dry, it goes to the markets, already packed into 50 kilogram bags. Next, all we do is just carry it to the markets. And after the salt, back to the beautiful salt water, and back to one eye. For the last days of the competition with some really big seas running. A little work on the reef. One eye, we're coming towards the end, so I'll try to get it right for the last three days. We're waiting for some waves. We see that the reef is cutting up sharp, uh, but I prefer to have it cutting the equipment rather than my feet. That makes sense. You shouldn't put your foot on the ground because coral cuts, and in the holes you'll find sea urchins. Certainly if you brush against the coral, it really does really hurt you. A big swell, plenty of wind, perfect conditions for the Windsurf Trilogy. Three weeks, three rounds of racing, waves up to 10 feet tall and taller, 10 to 12 days of wind. All the riders impressed by this spot and the friendliness of the people and by the quality of the competition. performed brilliantly the wave is tremendous and so are the performances but amongst them all 
somebody has to win. It's Scott Carville. He's the winner ahead of Stefan Etienne with Scott McKercher coming in third spot and Ricky van der Torn finishing fourth. The Mauritian windsurf session is coming to an end. Another great trip to remember for the riders before they go off to other spots, endlessly looking for those special things, the perfect wave, the adventure, the discovery of other cultures, an odyssey, a quest to constantly reinforce the spirit of windsurf. Hi, guys. Uh, perfect, really. Just uh, lots of surf, lots of sailing. Much play time. Oh, I, I don't think it's important that I won. I think the important thing is that all of us got a lot of good sailing in and, and we spent a lot of time on the water and we saw one eye as good as it gets and, you know, we, we all had a good time and surfed and sailed and I think that's the main thing with the trilogy is to have a good time sailing. In. This is the second running of the Windsurf Trilogy. Frederick Gravoe's idea is easy enough to bring some of the world's best windsurfers to some of the world's dream windsurf locations. Competing is really just the excuse needed. This year, the sailors are at Sal Island again, where just like last year, conditions are exceptional. The main headache is transporting all the equipment, which, as usual, gets stuck at the airport. But enthusiasm is high. Jason Pryor explains to us 
what attracts him to the windsurf trilogy Cabo Verde is a marathon it's just it's gonna be it's gonna be three weeks of the most intense surfing wave sailing that I can imagine I mean from being from Hawaii it's just it's the best it's I mean it, it's better than anything we have in Hawaii I mean for for small to medium-sized waves and even to larger waves it's just it's perfection We know how good the spot is now, so we're even more motivated than we were a year ago, and we're really looking forward to tomorrow. How do you see the event this year? I think it'll be great. I think it'll be really good. I was here two months ago, and the weather was great every day. There's a really strong competitive feeling. We can feel the challenge building up. We want it to be better this year. We're ready emotionally, physically, mentally. It's a very important year for us. The team finally arrives at Sal Airport. The beach is just a few miles to the north. In these lost islands, which in the past were important trading points, the event is crucial, so much so that the army makes a contribution to the running of the trilogy. This year we've pulled in the Cabo Verde army who have come to help us put up the tent. This is a straight line as you can see there. We moved the tents back a little bit in order so we can watch during the competition the athletes going straight ahead of us. Now we just have to wait but we're ready. After calling on the Army's resources, the trilogy creates some other jobs for the boys. Fonna is in charge of cooking and sticking up posters, and the life of the entire town is now focused on the traveling wind circus. It's great. It makes the whole town lively. Everybody's happy to see them. I hope we'll all enjoy it. It's much more lively here and in Santa Maria than usual. The trilogy enhances local life. The life of the people here is a little more tasty. For the trilogy, I guess there are three countries, Cabo Verde, Madagascar and Morocco. Yeah, I think that's right. Almost right. This year, Mauritius has replaced Morocco, but that's all to come. And for the moment, the trilogy has to brief the Capo Verde competitors in the center of town. Like the decline stickers, this side will be picky. Yeah, everything's great. Really reminds me of the Canary Islands. I live on Foot Adventure, and it's really similar. Yeah, I feel quite at home here. I can't wait to get to the break and check it out. Sunday morning and a cross shore wind has created a four to six foot swell.
Ricky van der Torn goes to warm up. Martin Esposito, Josh Angulo, Danny Seals and Levi Silva are registered in the first heat. Between the two heats, there's a five-minute break, and it gives us a chance to change the register sheet to prepare the names for the next heat. Then we put up the green flag, which means it's the start of the second heat, and the athletes know they've got one hour where they have to be on top of their game. We will only take their best five waves. The green flag is up. The second heat begins despite a sudden drop in wind.
minutes later, no more win. The win was too light, not heavy enough for the competitors to really push themselves to the limit, so the competition kind of died. The heat started when we least expected it to, but it went pretty well. Stoked, this wave is so good. It's like a killer point break. Like one of the best sales I've ever had in my life. Perfect wave. Okay, I have here the result of the first heat of the first round. The fifth is Pascal. The fourth is Danny. Uh, the third is Martin. And the second is Levi Fiverr, and the first is Josh Angulo. To go with the trilogy and to do travel stories, I realize that that makes me happier and that's, that's, that's what I want to do. These are great experiences for everybody as they enjoy the culture of these islands. At night time, the streets of Santa Maria are filled with people playing, working or fishing. Here we catch fish with a rod and a line, or we use our hands. We pull the fishing line very hard when the fish are biting, and then we strike. It's really easy, especially when you get used to it, and you can catch some really big ones. Ah, tu vois un truc comme ça passer en dessous C'est déjà une question. Ah oui. C'est là, ouais. Allô, mamie. Ah ouais, ça, ça. Et aussi, ça, tourisme Tourism is the second biggest industry. You've got fishing, trading, and building industry as well. La pêche, le commerce et la construction civile. Il a niqué un surfeur, celui-là. Everybody's waiting for the restart of the competition. Meanwhile, Pascal Hardy from Quebec shows off to some of the local youngsters. I think they're really happy to see something new that they can play on dry land. They're used to playing on sports ground, and like this, they can have fun with the wind. In Cabo Verde, it's very windy all the time, and it would be good for these kids to have a new sport to play. Each morning, Chief Judge Pierre goes off and scouts around the various windsurfing spots to see if the wind is finally blowing. We do this every morning. We go out to check all the various windsurfing spots. The first one we'll check is called Punta Preta, which is on the west coast of Sal Island. And at this particular point, we'll check on the waves, the wind, and the tide. Like every morning so far, the verdict is bad. No wind. However, the swell is up, and the boys can surf instead. A lesson learned from last year's competition, pack a surfboard.
surfer's, windsurfer's dream and to go out and, I mean, a right hand point break and I'm a natural surfer and sailing and surfing the wave, it's a, it's a dream come true. This year some real youngsters have joined the adventure. Levi, Martin and Nathan are the babies of the trilogy. Being here in Cape Verde is just, it's a really big experience for some. It's like completely opposite from the U.S. I mean, everything is so much different, you know. Everything's new, you know, the way people go about things. And, and it's just, it's really, it's really good experience for me, you know. Everybody has some activity to pass the time. For Sean Ordinez, it's his computer. I'm just trying to keep in touch with the outside world since we are sort of out here in the middle of a, a land in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean where the waves and winds are perfect, but when there's no wind, you just gotta kill time and play with your notebook. Despite the lack of wind, everybody has a good time. A Miss Trilogy contest is organized with not an Eric Morley in sight. Finally, the wind starts to blow. score the style and the characteristics and how are we going to make the surfing style the priority and we've come up with that really good so we've taken a real huge step this year now next year all we have to have is like little flags and little horns and name cards and shit and all the stuff that makes us feel real special and then i mean then, then we're huge competition is over and Josh Angulo finishes second to the half American half Colombian Sean Ordenez. 
for sure to win this competition among a lot of my friends and new friends that I've made is it means a, a big thing in my life and um, for sure it might seem like a small competition but it really it has a lot of essence and heart into it so to win it uh, for me and to have my friends here and witness you know basically I was witnessing them ripping just as hard as I felt I was ripping so that's a big stoke for me. Thank you.